I think everybody made it from downstairs, and wasn't the meal delicious? Yes. It was very good. So when you see the men, thank them for serving it to us, and if you see Wesley, thank him for doing such a good job preparing it for us. Okay, um, I came up a little bit early just to see if the people were ready, and Doug was standing here, and I said, Doug, do you still like me? And he said, well, yeah, why? I said, well, you, you're doing this again. You know, it's sort of become a, a tradition that Doug helps us out with some other daughters, mother child skit. He said, Cor of course, he likes to do this. <laughs> well, Tanya's helping him this year, and Zachary was going to help, but he has a ball game tonight. I think it might have been a makeup for, I don't know, for sure. And um, Emily's going to help because we needed a son and a daughter. And I didn't know that um, <sighs> Lindsay and Kimberly were going to be here for sure. They should have done the part because they're really daughters. <laughs> okay. And it doesn't have a name, but it has five scenes and you can see them in your program. And I think the uh, performers are ready to begin. Oh, 
off my feet. Yeah, but your nose is like the Tower of Love. <laughs> and it's so romantic when you hint that I need plastic surgery. Yeah. There's got to be a good one in here somewhere. You found some. You have a different translation than I do? Nope. Same as yours. Hmm. Well, let me read this one. If only you were like a brother to me. <laughs> Excuse me? Maybe this Song of Songs thing wasn't such a terrific idea after all. Well, I'll tell you what. It's time for bed. You mean it? <laughs> well, it is bedtime. Do you really think my legs are like pillars of marble? <laughs> Do you really think my nose is like the Tower of Lebanon? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to love that one, go, are you? <laughs> not as long as my hair is like a herd of goats. <laughs> <laughs> House come would always work for King Solomon. You say the nursery's down here? Go, go this way and then make, make a right? Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I found it. The nursery. Wow. The newborns, they all look alike. How about I tell the girls from the boys? Oh, wait. The girls are wearing pink and the boys are wearing blue. But that only gives me. 50% chance. Which one's mine? Wait, there's a nurse. Maybe she can help me. Hey, nurse! She can't hear me. Oh, do not pound on the window. <laughs> nurse! Nurse! I'm looking for my baby. Randall. understood me that time. Yeah, there, there, yeah, she's bringing him over. Oh, he did. That's, his first, that's my baby. That's my baby right there. I made that. I did a really good job, didn't I? Jeez. Oh, Wait a minute. He doesn't look like me at all. Are you sure that's my baby? Randall! Oh, the name is on the Okay, thank you. So it's him. Okay, he's young yet. He'll probably look like me when he grows up, I'm sure. Oh no, what am I saying? This baby's gonna grow up. He can't do that. This wasn't part of the deal. I wanted a baby, not a child. Certainly not a teenager. Oh, I can hear the conversations now. I'll warn him time and time again about the mistakes I made when I was his age. But he'll go off and he'll do them. Do them anyway. Maybe I should put him up for adoption before my wife gets attached to him. <laughs> nah, I, I, I can't do that. She's already attached to him. So I guess we're father and son. All right then, son. Let's, let's practice. Son, when I was your age, I did a lot of really stupid things. Nah, that'll never work. I can't admit that I made mistakes. I'm his dad. Dad don't make mistakes. Let me try this again. Son, 
As you grow up, you'll really do some stupid things. And I just want you to know that when you do, I'll never let you forget it. <laughs> just like my dad did with me. When we get into arguments, I won't let you finish a sentence. I'll jump to conclusions. I'll judge your motives instead of your actions. I'll expect you to conform to my expectations rather than encourage you to develop your own individuality. And of course, I'll expect you to meet my emotional needs. Because after all, that's why people have children. By the time I'm finished with you, you'll be a carbon copy of me. <laughs> Wait, I, I can't. That's not right. Is that what God wants? A carbon copy of me? I can see right now that this dad thing is going to take, a, take way too much thought. Maybe I should rethink this adoption thing. No, I can't look at that. Look at him. He's my baby. All right, Lord. You've given me this beautiful baby. What do you want me to do with it? You can't be serious. You want me to treat him like a seedling. A seedling? You want me to treat my baby boy like a vegetable? I don't understand. Tell me, what, what, what does that mean? Oh, I see. You want me to nurture him. You want me to cultivate him and encourage him to grow. Yes, of course, that's it. That makes sense, Lord. My job is to focus on his needs. To meet his emotional needs. Besides, the seedlings are too busy growing to be aware of anyone's needs. The farmer would never expect the seedlings to become a carbon copy of himself. After all, he's a seedling. If I force him to be something else, I keep him from being all you created him to be. Right, Lord? That's it, Lord. That's it. My job is to tell him about his creator. And that his creator has created him to be unique in the world. There will be no one else like him. Rather than encourage him to be a carbon copy of me, I should help him discover his uniqueness. What a waste it would be if there were two of me and none of him. Thanks, Lord. Son, welcome to the world. I can hardly wait to nurture you. And once you grow into all that God wants you to be, and if there's any time left over, I suppose your mom can play with you too. <laughs> Sweet dreams, my beautiful baby. I'm a dad. I'm really a dad! I think we got the better half of the split. <laughs> what split? I think 
God's image is too big for a single human being. So he split his image into two images, male and female. I think he emphasized his power and provision in the males, and I think he emphasized his softness and tenderness in females. And I think the females got the better half of the split. What do you mean? I mean, I think God emphasized his arms and legs in men so they could fight the battles, plow the ground for food, and protect their families, things like that. But I think that God emphasized his loving heart and his gentle hands in women so they would love and cuddle their babies, care for the sick, and brush their daughter's hair. You think so? I don't expect that you'll fully understand God's gentle, gentle hands and loving heart until you become a mother. I feel sorry for men because they will never fully experience the heart and hands of God like a mother can. I changed my mind. I'm glad, girl. And I think I've got the hands and the heart for it, too. I think I'm going to tell Daddy that he got the short end of split. Let's just let this be our little secret just between us for this. <laughs> Yo, Dad. <laughs> hey, son. Mom said you wanted to see me. Yes, I did. Can't wait. I mean, the party going on back there. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that all 19 of those 12 girls you made showed up. Come on, Dad. You only had a few graduations in life. Yeah, I know. I, I was just kidding. So what's so important? This. That? That box has been in your closet forever. Yep, it has been. It's a family tradition. An empty box? Well, I put something in it for your graduation, just like my grandfather did for my dad, and my dad did for me. And I hope you think enough of it that you'll do it for your son, too. Well, what is it? Well, open it and find out. Is this? <coughs> the family joke? No, it's a graduation present. A snail? Not the snail. It's the gift of the lesson. The gift is the lesson of the snail. It's the three secrets of the successes in life. Three secrets of the success in life? From a stupid snail? From a snail. Alright, I'm listening. What are these three life lessons from a snail? Keep moving. <laughs> and what? You said there were three lessons from this snail. One of the lessons is keep moving. Uh, what are the other two? Well, that's the second and third lesson too. <laughs> keep, keep moving. <sighs> Where are you going? Is this going to take long? Well, if experience is any predictor, this will take about a lifetime. Oh. Bear with me, son. Going back to them. This won't take long. Yes. Let me see. You see that trail of slime there behind the snail? <laughs> yeah, I see it. Well, look at it. The snail moves so slow that if it weren't for that trail of slime, it would be difficult to notice that the snail made any progress at all. Yet I put the snail in the box only five minutes ago. And you can already see that he's made a lot of progress. Okay. I think I see the first lesson of this snail. Keep moving forward. Um, even though you can't see uh, that you're making progress, I guess. Bingo. Abraham was over 100 years old before God's purpose was in, in him was fulfilled. Noah was over 600 years old before the Lord was finished with him. Here. What's that? The second lesson of the snail? Well, actually, yes, it is. What is that? Salt? No, it was a couple of grains of sugar. Well, you just messed up the first lesson. The snail's not moving anymore. <laughs> he stopped eating. Uh, 
Uh, so the second lesson of the snail is keep moving, except when you're eating. Well, yeah, but uh, think of it a little bit more spiritual. My daily quiet time? Exactly. See, the snail is really stupid. He moves around around the box looking for food. But his food is stupid too. It doesn't tell him where to find his next meal. So what you're saying is the food I get from my daily quiet time cuts down on the randomness of my movement. You are so right. You're so bright, actually. No wonder your mother calls you son. <laughs> All right. Lesson number two from the snail. Keep moving, except when stopping to ask for directions. That's right. I like that. Pass that on to your son. All right. Now you've got my curiosity up. What's the third life lesson from this stupid snail? More sugar? Sorry, Dad, I already learned that. No. This one's a little different. Is that what I think it is? Yes, it is. It's a rat robbing. A rat robbing? <laughs> oh, come on. Well, look, I placed it between the sugar and the snail. He's eating it. Well, the snail has an excuse. He's stupid. I'd say. <laughs> well, look, he's within easy reach of that delicious sugar ring kid. But he settles for much, much less. Uh, I think I see why you took me aside at this party. Why? To tell me that the Lord has a purpose for my life. It is as sweet and pure as sugar, but it would be so easy to settle for a lot less. Right. Like that. I'm not saying you shouldn't have fun at the parties. And the girls. I know, but life lesson number three from this snail is pretty clear. If I'm ever tempted to settle for less than God's best for me, keep moving. moving. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Well, here's something else for your graduation. Ah, thanks, Dad. Here, let me take this for you. Okay. Now, this is really important. It's a family tradition. I want to show it to the guys. You'll run hers up the girls. Nah, maybe so. But I think everybody can learn a lesson from this now. Okay, then. Are you coming? No, I think I'm going to go wash my hands. Oh, yeah. Happy graduation, son. Thanks, Dad. Three years ago, maybe? 
before he was before he was yes. <laughs> discovered. Kids here? 